And welcome back to The Breakfast. Now, let's go back in history and uh, share with you what happened today, uh, 15th of March. I'm going back to the year 2007. It was on this day that the Independent National Electoral Commission barred from a vice president and, of course, a future presidential uh, candidate, uh, Tiku Abubakar, from contesting in the elections in 2007. Uh, the, this was an era where, you know, we had just finished the second tenure of uh, from our president, Lushegu Basanjo, and of course his vice president, who at that time uh, was, you know, at loggerheads with the president. Uh, there was loads of conversations about, you know, what you know, they were fighting over and the reasons why they suddenly, you know, fell out. Uh, there was also conversations about why he didn't, of course, if he, if he was uh, fighting with the president at that time, why didn't he resign? Why also wasn't he dropped by the president, Lushegu Basanjo? But those are, you know, the extra angles to the story. On this day, the Electoral Commission, headed by uh, Professor Maurice Iwu, uh, barred Atiku Abubakar from Nigeria's elections, omitting his name from the roster of two dozen approved candidates, including uh, current President Muhammad Buhari. The Electoral Commission gave absolutely no reason for this. And of course, uh, a panel arranged by President Olusha Gombasanjo's um, executive branch at that time asserted that Abubakar Abu allegedly had uh, um, embezzled state funds. INEC, of course, uh, used that as their excuse uh, to bar him. Uh, they said uh, candidates with indictments should not, of course, be allowed. There were court cases left and right. Uh, lawyers in the capital back then said the only the nation's highest court can overturn the commission's decision, which cleared 24 other candidates to run. Eventually, uh, Matiko Abubakar did get you know, his um, approval to go ahead and run, but it was too late. <laughs> the April election was the first civilian to civilian transfer of power since Nigeria's independence from Britain in 1960. And of course, uh, since then, he had, or you know, prior to that, he had won nearly a dozen court cases related to his candidacy. Um, in the you know uh, month of April, and of course uh, prior to that, so it was on this day you know that that very very controversial move by the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, took place. Uh, the elections eventually still went on, um, it, um, and um, um, election observers at first were barred by Morris Iwo from um, coming into the country to observe the elections. But from the analysis, it still was stated that it was one of Nigeria's worst elections. Um, with rigging and vote buying and violence and every other thing that you can you know imagine uh, coming into play there, you know that eventually led to Umaru Musa Yaradwa uh, taking over power. I remember that um, in later interviews he had mentioned that it was one of the um, that the elections that brought him into power were uh, you know seen from his perspective as very very fraudulent. But of course he still you know um, won the elections. Uh, Mohamed Buhari at that time lost. Um, things about 20 something million votes, you know, to six million votes uh, that the um, that uh, Mohamed Bari uh, got at that time. Um, Atiku Abubakar, of course, you know, fell back, couldn't contest in the elections, and continued to be, you know, a Nigerian statesman, a politician until he once again, you know, contested uh, not long ago. And they started and saying he was not in again. Nigeria, he's from Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, anyway. <laughs> you know, one funny thing about Nigerian politics, I mean, it's open secret that when you're on their side, your records are clean, you're a saint, you're yes. perfect. But when you're not on their side, you have a list of saints that they're willing to show to the world. I mean, this just reminds me of the Obaseki drama in Edo State. You know, when he was with the APC, he was perfect, clean record. When he didn't get, you know, what he wanted and had to defect, then they remember that his uh, uni university certificate or university certificate was forged. Yeah. It's just politics and it's sad how it's played here. You know, and, and also, you know, things to point out, you know, one thing to point out was, um, you know, from the way it looked, you know, it really showed the hand of the, uh, you know, incumbent, you know, to be able to control the Independent National Electoral Commission. You know, Priyada Morris, who was there before he eventually was replaced by Atari, Atari Jaga in 2010. Um, it showed how much power the incumbent had to control INEC, to control security agencies, to control the courts, you know, if, if uh, possible. Um, Atiko Abubakar did win a lot of those court cases that gave him clearance to contest in the election because he did, wasn't indicted for any corruption, you know, cases, but it eventually was too late. Um, and uh, over time, you know, we've tried to put ourselves as a country in a place where the incumbent no longer has that more power. INEC is an independent, as that's the first word even, mm -hmm. um, in, in, you know, INEC. Uh, it, it's a completely independent body that should be able to take its own decisions, uh, regardless of whoever it is that is in power. But I don't think we've fully achieved that yet. 
I think we're still trying, we're still making whatever uh, moves. I hope that the Electoral Act, whenever it is passed and fully implemented, will be able to give ANEC more powers and will be able to give us you know, better electoral process um, generally. All right, so moving on today in history, what happened was a former U.S. president uh, began to uh, a process of legislation for all Americans to be able to vote. And uh, he addressed a joint session of Congress to urge the passage of the legislation which guaranteed voting rights for all. And this was on the 15th of March, 1965. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson uh, gave that address. Many people were against it. You know, they, they weren't happy about the moves he was making. But uh, he, he declared that every American citizen must have an equal right to vote. Uh, eventually, legislation was passed and uh, the, the implementation was very weak. Lots of states and governments refused to implement uh, that uh, law that uh, Lyndon B. Johnson had put in place. And that's what happened today in history, uh, March 15th. All right, so this is, this is um, um, multiple times um, when we do today in history or when we have these type of conversations, you know, trending issues across the world, we've um, spoken a lot, you know, of um, issues concerning, uh, you know, giving black Americans, you know, and the steps that they had to take to ensure that they had equal rights um, in the United States and across the world. Um, sadly, in 2020, 2021, we're still at a place where you can still see um, racial segregation, you know, creep up here and there. You can still see um, how black African Americans still, you know, uh, are a little bit discriminated against, you know, with, you know, with um, not just, you know, in their faces now, but with the system, with the judicial system. In, in, in a lot of ways, you can still see those things. So Lyndon B. Johnson was praised, you know, was celebrated as one of the people who uh, did exceptionally well with regards to African American rights and to, you know, basically uh, end racial segregation and to end the injustice that was meted out to African Americans at that time. Um, and this is what in the 60s, you know, so my question would always be how much, you know, better have we done or has um, the United States of America done to ensure that African Americans and, of course, colored people generally have equal rights uh, mm. with, with this? I think well, we, the, good, now, the good thing is that, you know, many years later we had a a black president exactly. and a person of Barack Obama. Exactly. And, you know, people would say that if, if these things weren't changed by Lyndon B. Lyndon B. Johnson back then, uh, we probably would, uh, well, not we, Jesus, uh, America <laughs> wouldn't have been able to. American at heart. <laughs> wouldn't have been able to achieve some of these things. It wouldn't have maybe been possible for the United States to have African-American voters in those numbers to be able to give them a black president. Same thing with Joe Biden. Um, he, he leaned a lot towards the African-American community. De the Democrats basically leaned a lot towards the African-American community um, in order to win some of these elections. And so um, kudos to Lyndon B. Jo B. Johnson back then. Yes. All right. That's uh, what we have for you. I went back to the year 2007. And uh, 1965, where Lyndon B. Johnson gave the famous address uh, to a joint session of Congress. And of course, we'll take a short break. When we come back, once again, we'll move into our first major conversation for today uh, on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Stay with us.